Hello and welcome to my new channel, Handheld Computing. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. And in this first episode, we're going to have a look at the iconic Palm 5. Um, a handheld originally released in 1999, so they are getting on a little bit. Um, but if you're into retro computing, you're going to love this. Okay, let's get to it. So here it is, the Palm 5, the first in the Palm range to use an internal rechargeable battery. It's also the first to be made out of metal. We've got an adenized aluminium body and um, both sides, front and back. And um, looking at the top, we've got a contrast button, infrared port, power button, which if you press and hold gives you backlight. On each side, we've got a slot which will accommodate a stylus or a cover. And same on both sides. At the bottom, we've got the connector for the synchronization cable and on the back, a small reset hole. Coming back to the front, we've got the application buttons calendar, phone book, to-do list and notepad. The large area in the screen is the display, 160 by 160, black and white, capable of showing four shades of grey. We've got a shortcut to an application button, the menu, calculator, find button and the graffiti pad area. So let's power it on and have a look at what it can do. First of all, we need to set it up. Uh, we'll just calibrate the screen, set the time and date, that'll do nicely, and we're in. Here we are at the main screen. We're going to start by looking at text input, as this is relevant to all the programs, and there's a handy little application called Graffiti built into the ROM to show you how it works. As you can see, we write the letters on the left side, numbers on the right, and let's try it. All the letters work as single strokes, the dot represents where you begin, so here we go. As you can see, it's quite fast at recognising them, and it can be fairly accurate with a bit of practice. Some letters are not very intuitive, like the X for example. If you want to do a capital letter, we activate Shift by doing an upstroke. If you want to continue with capitals, you just do a double upstroke. The little indicator at the bottom says that we're in caps lock. Numbers are written on the left side, and again, very straightforward, quite intuitive, and work very simply. There are lots of characters and punctuations you can add, and the shortcuts for these are on the graffiti stickers that come with the unit. Hopefully when you get yours, it will have those with it. There's also shortcuts to bring up a keyboard. If you're not happy with the graffiti input, you can pop a keyboard up here um, and just prod what you want to write. As you can see, it's not as accurate as you would like um, because it is quite small um, and you can have numbers from the other side. Lovely, that's how we input text. Let's have a look at a few applications. Let's look at the main applications that come pre-installed. Of course, this is a personal organizer and therefore it has a calendar. Here we are on the day view. I've just put an input in so you can see how it looks. And there's my appointment. And we've got a day view, a week view. You can't see directly what it is, but if you tap on it, it'll show you in a box at the top. There's a month view. And last but not least, a day view, including any to-do lists. Moving on, there's the contacts list. I've put one in here. It, as, it, as I said before, there are categories to everything. I've put this one in the personal category, which means it shows on all, but not on business, but does show when you put personal up. And um, this can be done for any of the applications, meaning that you can keep some things private and separate. Moving on, there's the to-do list. Uh, these can be rated by priority and um, which can be changed you can set alarms of course the piezoelectric speaker allows only beeps and whistles so nothing fancy there and last but not least there's the memo pad so i've put a memo in there so we can see how that is 
On the silk screen area, you'll notice there's also a calculator button, which we mentioned before. So there's a basic calculator function. There's a find function, which will sit through all the inbuilt applications looking for whatever you put in. It's fairly fast and looks through them pretty much instantaneously, making this very handy for keeping notes. It's not all work. As you can see, there are plenty of games available. Solitaire, Fire Escape, which um, I'm not very good at. There's also Sub Hunt included on your CD. Or Giraffe if you want to practice your graffiti. In addition, there is a Game Boy emulator, although most games run far too slow to be playable. You'll need better hardware for this. There's a Tricorder app, so you can pretend to scan your friends. And if you're in for a bit of wisdom, there's always Yoda. There were lots of games available, and I'll put some links in the description below. In addition to this, there's a security setting which allows you to lock the screen. So we can set a password. We'll use 111. 111. And turn off and lock. What that means is that when the machine is turned back on, you need to put the password in. This is actually very secure. It's not possible to synchronize it without the password. In fact, your data is essentially lost should you lose the password. So if you are gonna use this function, make sure you write the password down or at least make it memorable. Other than that, there's the preferences screen. This allows you to recalibrate your digitizer. You can adjust what your buttons open. So if you did want to open uh, your uh, solitaire, for example, with the memo pad, you certainly could. If you wanted them all to open solitaire, why you'd want to do that, I don't know, but you can. You can also set a pen shortcut. Uh, so at the moment, dragging up creates the graffiti help, which is a to-do list on your graffiti, but you can set it to turn off and lock. You can set it to turn on the backlight to beam to things or to show the keyboard. We'll leave it on Graffiti Help for now. This model was released in February 1999. At the cost of $450, it had a 16 megahertz CPU and two meg of RAM. The average program size was between 20 and 50K, so two meg was plenty. And of course, because there's no graphics on it, it didn't take up much storage for memos, to-do lists, calendars, or your contacts. It was only eight months later, however, that Palm introduced the Palm VX. Externally exa exactly the same, internally they increased the CPU by 25% to 20 megahertz and gave it 8 meg of RAM. So if you did want to install many applications, this was a significant upgrade. When you bought your car Palm, it came with a stylus, it came with a flappy cover. These would fit in either slot, allowing you to Protect the screen with the cover and of course carry your stylus wherever you went. They would click in nicely. It also came with the synchronization cradle. This allowed to charge it and synchronize with the computer over an RS-232. There's a single button on the front and a slot for a stylus. The plug itself is a standard two pin plug. It came with different adapters, making it easy for Palm to ship them to different areas. This is three pin because I'm in the UK. There were lots of other accessories that you could buy from other manufacturers. For example, you could get different covers. Here's one that's more like a wallet. We've got a graffiti sticker on the back, slides in place the same as the other, and you've got cards at the front and a side slot. This closes up like so and protects your $450 palm. If you wanted something a little bit more robust, there were metal covers. This one, for example, this is an official Palm one. I'm not sure about exactly what that is for, but again, we've got the stickers on the inside, folded up, and there it is, nice and protected. If you didn't like the Palm stylus provided, there were a range of other manufacturers making styluses, including metal ones, where you could remove the top and it would be a ballpoint, or perhaps even something like this, where there's an illuminated tip allowing you to use it in the dark. For those road warriors out there who were doing a lot of typing, it was possible to get one of these. This is a palm foldable keyboard. 
you can see it's a little bit bigger than the unit itself, quite a lot thicker. But if you were doing a lot of typing, this folds out to become a full-size mechanical keyboard. It's got a nice feel to the keys. It includes all the application buttons down the side, allowing you to simply slot your palm in, open an application and begin typing. The keys themselves are very comfortable. It was an extremely expensive keyboard, but handy if you were doing a lot of text on the go. As you can see, the backlight on the Palm 5 is inverted. Some people did like this, but not for everyone. If you use your illuminated stylus though, you can write even in the dark. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of the Palm 5 and 5X, as well as a look at the Palm OS operating system. In future videos, we'll be looking at the other main operating systems of the time, Windows CE and Scion, as well as some more modern handhelds. We'll be looking at compatibility with Windows 10 and basic repairs, including battery replacement and issues therein. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, tap the notification button, and then you won't miss out on my future videos. Thank you for watching.